this was a 120 page script I think and uh, every page equals one minute of screen time uh, we always knew it would be at the end a 90 minute long movie there's only you know a limited amount of tolerance that people have um, so we knew some stuff would go the scenes that got affected were bookends. We have Aaron today talking about something that happened in the summer of 73. you think they got the wrong man after the police interviewed me about what happened one of the officers admitted things were mishandled from the beginning the officer that showed you the autopsy photos yeah I saw the autopsy photos but it wasn't him he's still out there I never sleep through the night. I remember it all. It was terrible. It was a terribly hot day. It was very clear we had to find an actress uh, that looked like maybe at some point she, she, she was Jessica. Um, uh, that's always very hard, but I, I don't, I'm not a big believer of makeup and aging somebody. Uh, it, it easily can look very, very hokey. Stop your going so you The suicide scene, that almost got us an X rating, so we had to go back and uh, rework it. But when the suicide happens in this particular cut, we had a couple of cutaways, like ears falling into Pepper's lap and, you know, brain matter splashing around. So uh, you work on a movie like this too long, you develop a low threshold for those type of events. I won't go back. Back where? He's a bad man. He's a really bad man. Oh He's a bad man. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. You're all gonna die. Grab it, grab it! cut the blood is less red which I think is actually much scarier in a way I, I like that it's dark and I never like blood that looks like syrup or ketchup or whatever you know we usually use Bosco or stuff that's more muted Ain't no sheriff here. I think we should drop off the body and get the hell out of here altogether there was much more character exposition in the original cut as we had it planned there was some good stuff there. The more you invest in the characters, the scarier the movie is at the end, and the more of a sense of loss there is, you know, once you see them hanging off meat hooks. Maybe we should vote on it. Kemper, no. Why not, Aaron? <laughs> it is a democracy. Hey, what if that old lady got our plates? We could get in a lot of uh, trouble. Uh -uh. I mean, you heard her. What you do is your own business. It's fucking gospel to these rednecks. It isn't right. What? Why do you think I haven't been drinking or smoking or, or doing anything this entire trip? Did, did you think about that? Aaron, I, I don't know, okay? I mean, I can't read your mind. I'm trying, but... I'm pregnant. You're gonna be a dad, Kemper. And I am not having our baby in prison. 
So take care of this. Congratulations are in order. Huh? You mean I'll get the cigars? Please or... shut up. Now you tell me. Just go away. No, look, give me a break, all right? I mean, I just need a minute to digest all of this. Later on, we took it out. Uh, it just ran too long. There was too much talk and to do about uh, Kemper having to take responsibility for the child and uh, act like a father now and grow up finally. Uh, it became much more about commitment. How do I get to the sheriffs? You tell me sooner. I wanted you to propose for the right reason. Hey, what does that mean? Baby, I want you to marry me because you want to, not because you have to. I want to. All right, I want to. I promise you. I just. I just want to wait for the right time. Yeah, sure. You don't want to marry some dirty mechanic. I want something better than that for us. You know, maybe you should just start smuggling heroin instead of the old Mexican homegrown. Hey, you're a genius. No, seriously, the markup's like 100% higher. Can you be a drug smuggler with me? No. I think so. Come on. I really don't want to get fat. You were gonna make a beautiful fat lady. Shut up. All right, let's get this over with. I felt that the baby, which you never see, is not really that much of an emotional trigger. If Kemper dies and we don't feel sad about him or sad for Aaron, have a feeling of loss, uh, then we did something wrong. I tried to do something very, very simple and came up with the idea of the ring. Aaron was describing the tear cut diamond ring. So at the end, when it falls out of his pocket, we know, oh my God, he had it all the time. He just never found a way of telling her. And to me, that emotionally did the same thing as a baby, but so much faster. It's just one shot. But still, you have that sense of loss and the feeling that he came around. He just didn't have the time to articulate it but Aaron will never know, but we do. Hey. What you got there? Um, some drawings out there. Can I see them? Uh, well, okay. Wow. <laughs> These are really good. You sure you're not just saying that? No, I swear, I really like them. Can I see the rest of them I done? Sure. Oh, come on. Don't we? Oh, then of course I can do this. Where are you going? Come on. Thank you, Jedediah. I feel so honored. This is a scene I actually regret that it's not in the movie. Little Jedediah is somebody I always wanted to get a better sense of. And um, I think people were missing that. What, what was he all about, you know? Um, you just want to get to know him a little bit. You know, he's the kind of local who could swing, become bad like all the others, or just maybe a little bit of a hope for, for a better future here. Uh, so he balanced it out, and um, uh, this was just a scene where we got to know him better and the kids better, but it didn't pace out that well. Um, it, um, it sort of stalled the action in a big way. Um, 
I'm still on the fence. I'm watching it now and I wish it would be in. Nobody wants to see on camera how somebody gets sliced from below. So we shot cutaways, his face screaming and a little blood splatter against the wall. But, but even that seemed to be too much for many. So uh, two shots had to go out, which really don't show you all that much. But uh, somehow leave me wondering what did really happen to him uh, by removing them. There's a reason for rating boards. We shot different versions of the ending, having Jessica tell us the story. Nobody believes her, but suddenly the reporter picks up on a detail. Aaron tells him that the body that was found was wearing a mask of human flesh, but it had both arms. Leatherface would only have one arm. So here the reporter suddenly realizes that there's maybe something to her story after all. What happened to the babies? They're with their foster families. They're happy. What makes you think they got the wrong man? The body in the autopsy photos had two arms. He only had one. Can you repeat that? People overall felt that it's sort of like sad to see Erin as an older woman that had to live her entire life in an insane asylum, having to give up her child, really, because at that point in the old version, she still was pregnant as a teenager. There's an interesting side note. An editor, a friend of mine, Jay Friedkin, was watching the longer cut when the bookends were still on, and we were contemplating losing them. And he said, um, did, I, did I ever mention when I worked for Kubrick? I said, no, I didn't even know you did. He said, I did one cut for Kubrick. He said, they showed the uh, movie The Shining to a test audience. And in The Shining, in the original cut, Shelley Duvall winds up in an insane asylum and she tells a story. So it had the same bookends. It's Shelley Duvall telling a story that nobody believes. But at the end, after she told the story and people walk away and disbelieve, you see that photo that's mounted in that salon at the hotel. As the camera pushes in, you see Jack Nicholson is really there, so it must have happened. But somehow when the lights went on, the audience just sat there. And when they got rid of that scene, 
the audience was, yeah, she showed it to him, good, right? So uh, one cut changed how an entire movie was perceived. Ironically, we did exactly the same thing. This is the only known image of Thomas Hewitt, the man they call Leatherface. The case today still remains open.